Today we will be going through the process of uh, installing custom ROMs into your Nexus 6. You will basically see how, how what's the process, the step by step guide to actually do it. So let's get started. Okay, uh, before, we, before we get started, please make sure the first thing if you are now on stock Android version, so make sure you go to your about phone. As for, as for myself, if you have actually enabled developers option, then yeah, you can you can just go in here and um, enable USB debugging, and as well as there are there are another options that you can go through. I think that one it's the uh, OEM unlock, enable OEM unlock. But um, since uh, I already unlocked my phone, so the options is not here. So if you haven't actually unlocked your phone, so you you'll be you need to basically enable OEM unlock here so you can lock your phone you can actually unlock your phone during fast boot but if you have done so you can ignore this step so in order to get to the developers option for example if you don't have that enabled what you need to do is to just click on the build number for like six seven times then you should have the developer options enabled where you can access the USB debugging portion so once this is done um, you can actually plug in your USB cable uh, to your laptop uh, from, from the laptop to your phone and if it prompts out some um, dialogue on trusting the device itself you should do that so that you can get your device linked up with the computer where to do the flashing. So uh, let us get into the process now. Hi all before we get started in installing uh, I mean like flashing custom ROM to your devices so first of all what we need to do is to install <coughs> ADB into your computer. So what, um, what ADB should you use? So uh, for me, my personal preference will be using minimal ADB and fastboot uh, because that that is um, I don't it's a lightweight, it's simple to use, easy to install and stuff. So I do not need to actually download the entire Google SDK in order just to enable uh, ADB and fastboot. And the second thing is that after you have installed, I'll leave a link down below uh, for you to install minimum, minimal ADB and fastboot from XDA Developer. So uh, if, after you have installed that, the, the one of the uh, I mean like things that you should do would be go to your advanced system settings. Look at it, it's advanced system settings, environment variables, and go to your path folder, and that is where you need to put in your minimal ADB and fast boot installation directory so that you can actually access all your ADB commands from anywhere in the command prompt. They'll be It'll, it'll ease up the flashing process eventually. So just remember that, right? So what you need to do now is to just close this off and we'll start the flashing process. <clears throat> okay, uh, before we start off anything, so what we need to do now is to transfer the uh, custom ROM files into the internal storage so that you can do the flashing later. So what you need to do now is to charging option. So you need to actually do a transfer files option so that um, you can actually transfer the file into the phone. Okay, uh, before we start to install a Lineage OS into the phone, Nexus 6 itself, so what we need to do now actually is to actually copy the OpenGX uh, as well as the Lineage zip files into the internal storage of the phone, so we can just paste it in and wait for it to finish. Okay, so once you have finished copying, everything else will be on the phone itself. So the next thing we need to do is to flash the um, TWRP recovery to your phone in fast boot mode, and as well as a, uh, as well as to install and flash everything over there. So what you need to do now is to. Just put CMD. So here, from here itself, you can do ADB devices. So it's there. So you just do an ADB reboot. So once you are rebooted, so you just go to your phone to continue on with the process. As you can see now, we are on fast boot mode. So once you are in there, make sure that your phone is on uh, unlock status. If your phone is unlock status, you can proceed to the next step. If it's not, you will need to run a fast boot 
OEM unlock to unlock the phone and just a precaution if you unlock the phone it will it will basically uh, erase all your data and, and stuff so please make sure you have a backup before that uh, once you have done with the OEM unlock and everything then we will proceed to the next step so when the phone is in fast boot mode <clears throat> what we can do now is to just check fast boot devices to ensure that this is locked so as you can see now, we would need to navigate to the installation directory. Uh, the, I mean not installation directory, but the directory where we store all the uh, where we store the TWRP recovery. So what we can do here is to do a D, which is for Nexus 6. So you can see here, this is all the stuff that we have, right? So what you can do now is to do a flashing of recovery, right? So what you do is you do a fast boot. So you just press enter and you finish flashing the recovery. So the recovery is now flashed. So what can you do now is at the fast boot, you can try to reboot the recovery. Let's just... Okay, when you are in this mode, so you just need to push the volume rocker to go to recovery mode and you just press enter. This is after you have flashed the recovery. So what you need to do now is to put into TWRP recovery. So once you get loaded, um, what you need to do the first thing before you make sure that phone is back up, that's, that's a, that is one of the major things you need to do. And second thing, before you start flashing, you need to make sure that you wipe everything except for internal storage because you are not your files are in there, your zip files, everything are in there, so you can't actually erase that. So what you need to do now is to clear off your cache, data, system, and your Dalby cache. So you just swipe to wipe. So now you're wiping off everything. So the next thing you need to do is to go back, back, back to the main screen. So from the main screen, you do an install. So this is the files that you have um, copied into your internal storage. So you start off with Lineage, then you add more zip, G apps and you're done. So once you have added these two files, two files added, though you just do a swipe to confirm flash. Then you just wait for the flash to complete. This will take a while I guess so you just wait it out. Okay, so once you heard a uh, slight vibration on your phone, it means that the flashing is completed. So if you can see now, what we can do is just to swipe to unlock the screen and it's done now. So what norm I normally do is wipe the big cache. Wait. Once you have wiped your Delvic cache, then what you need to do is just to do a reboot system. And normally I don't install the TWRP app, that's only up to you. So if you want, you can swipe to install, but I normally don't. So I'll just leave it as don't install. And you'll just need to wait for the phone to boot up for the first time. I guess it'll take a while, so I'll just wait it up. Okay, um, we have the Lineage OS boot up completed now. So what we need to do now is to just click on next in uh, English United States and skip. Well, this one is fine. Moki has a problem on detecting SIM card. So if you don't have a SIM card, this will fail. Somehow right, this one is okay. So you just set up it's new, key in the Wi-Fi password. I'm going to key in it now. So once it's done, it will connect, check for updates and stuff. And I basically think that the, um, I don't know, I, I basically personally feel that Lineage OS is slightly, is slightly faster compared to Rocky ROM. And so far on just the setup alone, you can skip this, um, it doesn't feel so buggy. On Rocky itself, even on the setup, it feels a bit buggy. So for me, this one, it's a bit more smooth and um, less, less issues so far. So um, they have the same same 
things as the privacy guard and you got personal data such as contacts, message and call logs are not available for newly installed apps. So this one is up to you whether you want to do it. So this one is whether you want to help the nature as improve. So you can just set it and you just put it to start. So this looks a bit cleaner. Of course, they don't have the pixel launcher out by default. Yeah, you can actually just put it in via custom launcher and stuff. But this is pretty clean. And then this is the uh, things that you have here. So um, this one feels a bit more like stock. So if you look at it, they do have a um, Samsung One Dot Two uh, Guava Seven uh, August Fifth security patch so it's not the latest security patch as what the um, what's the Moki ROM has but um, it's not far behind it's just August and um, things feels good and of course this this updates they have a 14.7.15 patch update so as you can see they can do is just to download the updates as per normal they're gonna download the entire 400 meg of updates for this um, you can leave it down to updates so they did have the September patch so it's comparable and um, of course the, the things are similar in terms of features they have the live display as well where you can actually just do an automatic so when it reaches a certain time they will calibrate the colors to have uh, lesser blues at night and um, other than that it's tap to wake is there so let's just test it out so you can just double tap there so it's not maybe not as responsive but it's it's there and um, then notification itself it's the same it's the same thing um, it's a small folding window um, I don't know how it goes for this um, you can see float up how do you do a float up so if I just put okay so it works so anyway the, the float up stuff I'll need to check it out on it later so um, besides that, the gesture where they have will be double tap to sleep on the status bar. So meaning uh, you need to double tap on the status bar to sleep and you double tap again to wake. And this one seems responsive enough. Um, they do not have the additional stuff like three finger, three, three finger kind of like uh, screenshot stuff. So where that one is slightly better in terms of that. Then other than that, home double tap action and uh, home press long apps feature this one you can actually change it to like search assistance so when you do that um, you can actually have the uh, google assistant but you need to have your google account sign in first before that so yeah we'll just keep that for now so that's where you can change and this one is actually a downloading so on apps basis it does have audio fx which is not out of the box stock has it so small speakers that one is fine if you would like some better sounds and stuff so um, for Google Apps itself it's only a Play Store and Google App two of them so if you do a G Apps install on Nano basis there's nothing much so other, other stuff you need to download from the Play Store I like it this way is because it's clean and it's lightweight so other than that there's not much stuff available so they're running on um, Lineage camera app they're running on um, Lineage browser is messaging is standard or Android messaging AOSP stuff so so things are clean and this is this is pretty good so um, this is very close to stock with some additional features and um, of course um, for those that wanted the um, stock experience without too much stuff this is a good one Moki is actually not too bad but it's just that they they just feels a bit buggy as of now, as of what we go through on the previous video on Moki ROM uh, flashing, it feels, it just feels a bit uh, buggy. That's how I feel it. This one seems to be okay. Everything seems to be working fine. And for your notification, I think they do have the uh, battery light enable. You know, always on, battery low. You can change the color. Then you have notification light always on. Then you can do your colors stuff as well here. Which, is, uh, which I find it pretty good. So the only thing missing out from here would be the gesture for three finger screenshot. So you still need to use a conventional way of doing a screenshot. Other than that, um, other things is quite similar to stock. There's nothing much. Uh, of course, they have a battery meter there. So if you can actually set uh, battery, I 
think there are some uh, military stuff that you can do but um, I think that is on display it's on display um, you need to find about it I mean they can actually set if you take out this stuff you can actually set a battery percentage in the uh, in the top bar itself so let me just find where is it so buttons you can set some home press sub buttons I think we have done that um, device control playback and stuff so uh, where is that uh, I think status bar yeah you can go to status bar and you can do a quick pull down left right that's up to you if you do it so it's a curl so you can have inside the icon so if you plug it in now you can see it's inside the icon or you can do a, a outside or next to the icon which is like this so so it's it's pretty neat, I think. Uh, so you can go inside the icon, and you can have the browser just right there, right? Which is, which is nice. Um, can you see? Uh, it's, it's there. So I can continue plugging it. So still downloading the update. So overall, this is how the Lineage OS looks like for your Nexus Six. I've been using this version of ROM for like close to six months I guess uh, previously and I find that it's good. The stock ROM does give me a bit of problems in terms of uh, the lag when I'm running certain apps. This one seems to be a bit better. I'm not saying it's like super fast or anything but it's a bit better and um, and there are certain more stuff that I wanted is there like double tap is there like your um, your I don't know some other like live display I like I like it when the, the system just automatically can do lights at night and stuff. So those are there in lineage, but it's not in stock. So for me, that that is uh, is pretty important. I use that in almost all my devices. So yeah, that is the reason why um, lineage is it's not bad. But if you want me to choose between lineage and Moki, um, for now I think lineage is slightly more uh, more stable than Moki ROM itself. So unless there are certain advantages, I would advise to just use the Nature OS ROM for the Nexus 6. Okay, that's all for now guys. So um hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, just give it give it a thumbs up. Um, if there's anything that you wanted to ask and stuff, you can leave a comment down below. And I'll see you again soon. Bye!